We have so far explored many and varied subjects regarding the Quran and Hadiths, based entirely upon the Muhammadan Muslim records. We shall be dealing with a great many more subjects, especially regarding the compilation, collection and formation of the Quran in the 300 years after the death of Muhammad, all of which will be based entirely upon the Muhammadan records themselves. Can you nonetheless give us your conclusions about the Quran? Before I answer your question, I would like to repeat once more the following facts. No human being is born evil. Young children, toddlers age, before they have had their minds corrupted, indoctrinated and programmed, do not distinguish between color, race, gender, ethnicity, religion or political affiliations. They are all totally innocent. Every human being is a product of indoctrination by their parents, their siblings, their family and their culture. Not a single one of us has had the free will to choose our parents, our race, our nationality or our beliefs. The followers of Muhammad are not born evil. They are programmed to be evil, to hate and to discriminate against all those who do not believe as they do. The male followers of Muhammad treat their females as if they are domestic animals without individual rights, without respect and dominate them through terror, fear and violence. Muhammadan Islam is theocratic and hence does not allow for the freedoms of conscience, of political rights, of religious rights, of democracy, of individual human rights and dignity, etc. All you have to do is look at the 55 so-called Muslim states in the world today and you already have your answer. It is the Quran which it instructs them to hate 87% of humanity because they do not believe in Allah and in Muhammad as his messenger. It is the Quran which discriminates against the women followers of Muhammad and treats them like chattel. It is the Quran which forbids the followers of Muhammad from reading and exploring the beliefs and religions of other people lest they find out the facts and the reality about itself. It is the Quran which divides humanity into two camps, that of the believers Dar Salam against that of the unbelievers Dar Al Harb. It is the Quran which mandates that the whole of humanity has to become Muhammadan Muslim or under Muhammadan Islam by conversion, by submission or by slaughter. It is the Quran which mandates that Muhammadan Islam should be at war to aggress, to expand, enslave and to plunder all so-called unbelievers. Muhammadan Islam's own historical record is a testament to this. It was Muhammad in his Quran who 1400 years ago unilaterally declared war against all other human beings on earth who do not believe as he does. It is the clear and declared intention of the followers of Muhammad in all forms of media, especially in the Western democracies, that their objective is to Islamize Christian Europe Hindu India, Buddhist China and all others. One cannot find a single applicable merciful or compassionate verse in the Quran towards any and all unbelievers. Muhammadan Islam and its male followers exhibit an obscene degree of hypocrisy, of mendacity and of racism, compounded with a pathological and depraved indifference to reality, to facts, to mercy to compassion, to veracity, to loyalty, to friendship and to language. While Muhammadan Muslims in our democracies demand that the rights of religious traditions, they forbid the same rights to Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, Jews and animists among them. While they are allowed to build many of the most gigantic mosques in the democracies, they forbid the building of any holy places to others. While they demand equal rights under the law in the democracies, they give none to others. While they are allowed and take advantage of proselytizing in the democracies, they would execute anyone from another religion from doing the same in their states. While they are allowed to preach and flaunt the Quran in public in the democracies, they forbid the same to any others under penalty of death. While they welcome converts to Muhammad and Islam, they will execute them if they change their mind to opt out. They are explicitly forbidden in the Quran 
from befriending any Christians and Jews as well as any unbelievers. In most Mohammedan Muslim states, they attack, burn, rape, abduct, force into conversion Christians, Hindus, Buddhists and others. 98% of all acts of terror in the world today, such as hijackings, suicide bombings, blowing up trains, cars, buildings, etc., invariably against defenseless and innocent civilians in Europe, Asia, America and Africa are conducted by the peace-loving followers of Muhammad. Islam does not mean peace. In Arabic, Islam means only submission, submission to Allah. That is why they want the whole of humanity to submit either to Allah or to themselves. They want to drag the whole of humanity down to their level, the abyss of ignorance, of stupidity, of hate, and of discrimination. Mohammedan Muslims are the clones of Muhammad even after 1400 years. The common denominator in all the above has its roots in the Quran. The disease is called Mohammedan Islam. The symptoms of this disease are hate-mongering, war-mongering, ignorance, stupidity, discrimination, racism, etc. This disease is propagated through the so-called religious leaders such as mullahs, imams, ayatollahs, etc. in their madrasas, the religious schools, their education system and their media. This disease attacks the brain centers of the followers of Muhammad, especially the areas of logic, mercy and compassion, turning them into zombies, the living dead. The source of this disease is a virulent virus called the Quran. No compassionate and merciful divinity would have produced the discrepancies, hate-mongering, war-mongering, discrimination, historical and character dislocations, mendacities, abnormalities, inconsistencies, time and space displacements, and grammatical errors that permeate the Quranic verses. In fact, every letter, every word, every verse, and every chapter in the Quran are the product of Muhammad's personal thoughts and imaginings, his own alter ego, cleverly projected into the unsuspecting mouth of Allah, the supreme pagan rock god of Mecca, embedded in the corner wall of the Kaaba, called the Black Stone. There is, in the final analysis, absolutely nothing divine about the Quran. And any follower of Muhammad who would attempt to challenge these statements and conclusions based entirely on the records authored by the Muhammadans themselves will have the same probability of success as a snowflake in Muhammad's inferno. The Quran is satanic. Its fundamentalist followers have no choice but to be the same.